Okay, let's talk about the Praxis Elementary Education Math Exam, and that is uh, test code 5008. Now, if you're watching this video, which you obviously are, I assume that you're getting ready to take this exam, and that is fantastic. And what I have here for you is a practice problem that you should be able to do uh, without uh, any difficulty. Let me actually show you the problem. So here I have three fractions. What I want you to do without the aid of a calculator is to find the lowest common denominator. But I kind of want you to take it a step further. I want you to act as if you uh, are going to teach this to um, some students. Okay, what would be the procedure? So even though you can, let's say, do this uh, problem, how do you find, what is the algorithm, what is the procedure, what's the process of finding the LCD uh, when you have two or more fractions? Of course, I'm going to cover all of this in just one second. Matter of fact, I'll show you the right answer in a moment. But uh, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I have been teaching math for decades and uh, middle school and high school mathematics, actually. And I certainly know what it's like to take certification exams to include praxis exams. And uh, these exams are not easy, okay? You're taking a professional certification exam here. So you need to know a couple things. One, that uh, people do fail these exams, all right? Sometimes it takes, unfortunately, uh, people, you know, two, three, four tries to get through an exam. Now, I don't think that's really necessary for someone to have to take a test uh, that many times to pass. What you have to do is just get fully ready the first time, okay? And the math on uh, this particular praxis is a lot of high school level mathematics. Okay, you're really going to have to know a lot of algebra, geometry, and a lot of other stuff as well. But it's nothing that you can't do. You certainly, you know, at this point in your life, um, have already have the educational background to be successful. You're going to have to get really re-immersed in mathematics to be fully prepared for this particular exam. Now, uh, I have an outstanding test prep course for this Praxis exam. You can find a link to that in the description of this video. So if you're looking for a great way to prepare, my course will definitely help you out. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this problem. So here we have three fractions. The question is not to find the sum. I'm not interested in adding these uh, fractions up. I just simply want to know what is the lowest common denominator. All right, let's go take a look at the answer. The answer is 120. Okay, so that is the answer. Now, if you got the answer right, that is fantastic. So that's kind of like, kind of like one part of the question. The next part is how do you find the LCD? And these uh, values here are not that difficult. You know, I could certainly have made this problem much more challenging. I could have put, like, say, 208, uh, 88, and maybe 609 or something like that. This would have been a much, much more difficult problem. But nevertheless, you know, the procedure doesn't change. So let's go ahead and talk about how to do this problem. All right, so the first thing is when you're talking about finding the lowest common denominator, we need to just uh, take into account the denominators of the respective fractions that we're looking to add or subtract. So here we're talking about 20, 8, and 60. All right, so we got to take these three numbers, and what you want to do is prime factor each of these numbers. And a great way to factor any number is to use a factor tree. So let's go ahead and take a look at this uh, work right here. Of course, you can see I've already done the work. So here's 20, here's 8, and here's 60. Let's uh, focus in here on uh, 20 here. Okay, so we're going to factor 20. Now, the factors of 20, there's any number of different ways you can approach this. You can be like, oh, this is uh, uh, 2 times 10. That's fine. Uh, you just want to find a pair of factors for 20, but you're looking to prime factors. So let's uh, take two numbers that we know. When we multiply them together, we get back to 20, so that'll be 4 and 5. Now, these are the factors of 20, so I'm asking myself, okay, are either one of these factors pr a uh, prime number? If it's prime, I'm going to circle it. So in this case, 5 is prime, so I'll circle that, and I see 4 is not prime. I could continue to factor 4 into 2 times 2, which, of course, 2 and 2 are prime. Okay, so 2, 2, and 5 are my prime factors of 20. So 20 is equal to 2 times 2 times 5, 
Uh, so you always want to re, um, write uh, any repeating um, uh, values that are being multiplied together like this, 2 times 2, as powers. You'll see why here in a second. So 20 is really equal to 2 squared times 5. Okay, so let's take a look at 8. So 8 is 4 times 2. 2 is prime. I can continue to factor 4. So that's 2 times 2. So 8 is equal to 2 times 2 times 2. And of course, I want to again, exp again express that as a power. 2 times 2 times 2. We can write as 2 cubed. And you can see the work here for 60. Uh, even if you want 2 times 30, don't worry about it. When it comes to a factor tree, you'll, uh, as long as you continue to um, factor all the factors down to the prime factors, you'll still get the right answer. So 60 is going to be equal to 2 squared times 3 times 5, and you can see the work right there. Okay, so what do we do next? Well, this is the step one. So this is the first step, you know, in terms of instructing a student would be like, okay, let's, you know, you have to learn how to prime factor, right? So that's the first thing. The second thing you need to do is have a, um, a kind of a formula to actually find the LCD. Now there are easier, more um, kind of intuitive ways when we're talking about real simple, simple values about the lowest common denominators. But the kind of the procedure I'm talking about here is something that will carry on for much more challenging arithmetic problems and algebra. Okay, it's actually the same procedure uh, to find the lowest common denominator when you have algebraic uh, expressions, rational expressions, we call them. All right, so the lowest common denominator is going to be equal to the product, okay? of all the various prime factors. Okay, so we're gonna scan through all of our prime factors here of the denominators, and we're gonna take each unique prime factor and we're gonna multiply them together, all right? So we're gonna to have to have each prime factor represented uh, into the LCD, and then we're gonna multiply them together and we'll actually get the right answer. Okay, so now let's take a look at what we have. Let's start off with the um, most challenging part of this, and that is, uh, the dealing with the twos here, okay? So here I have two squared, here I have two cubed, and here I have two squared, all right? Now, I'm looking at this, I'm like, okay, do I need to have a two squared, malt, you know, in my prime factor? Uh, do I also need to have a two cubed and another two squared? No, we just need to represent uh, two, the number two. But which number two? The two squared or the two cubed or the two squared? Well, the way it goes is you need to identify the highest power uh, of these various um, uh, bases that you have. So if you have two squared and two cubed, you need to have the two cubed represent uh, that power of two. All right, so hopefully I said that in a non-confusing way. But here, our first prime factor is gonna be two cubed. We don't need to have all the twos represented. Uh, just one, two, which power of two? The highest power that you have, okay? So that's gonna be two cubed. All right, so now looking at my other prime factors, what do I have? Well, I have a five, I also have a five right there. So do I have to have, you know, two fives? No, just one five, just representing one of the, uh, you know, unique uh, prime factors into my LCD. So here's a five, here's a five, you just have to have one represented. So there is a five and I'm scanning through here. I'm like, oh, I have a three, I need to have that represented as well. So now I have two cubed times five times three, two cubed is eight, eight times five times three, 40 times three is 120. Okay, so this is how you find the LCD. Again, when you're looking at more basic problems, let's say like one third plus, uh, you know, let's say two fifths, you know, students can kind of reason through, oh, the LCD, you know, is 15. And you're thinking about the lowest number that both of these can go into. But in kind of in a more advanced way, this is the algorithm that, you know, ultimately all students need to know and all teachers need to know. So hopefully, you learned something, but uh, even better yet, hopefully you already knew this. So again, uh, no doubt that you could be successful on this certification exam, but you want to be fully prepared the first time. So definitely check out my uh, test prep course. Again, you can find the link to that in the description of this video. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best on your certification exam. Thank you for your time and have a great day.